Alistair Weaver and uh, friends here for Edmunds with our biggest ever tow test. Never before has there been so much choice if you want to pull stuff for work or for pleasure. Here are four full-size trucks representing the four types of propulsion on sale today. Diesel, gas, hybrid and electric. Now we're going to tow four Teslas around Southern California in the searing heat. All our trucks are fully juiced up with a bit of help from a generator and if you want to know how really anal we've got, we've actually weighed and equalised all the Teslas for a fair fight. We're going to reveal the cost, the tech, the challenges and finally which one of these trucks makes most sense for you. Here's the route. And here are the rules. And now, without further ado, let's get on with it. I'm here in the uh, F-150 Hybrid, most notably not the Lightning, and I'm feeling pretty good so far. I'm in tow haul mode, I've got the trailer set up for weight, for length, so uh, everything should be good. Ram 1500 Eco Diesel. This is a diesel. It's going to be a breeze for me. So the ZR2 has the worst range about all of the actual ICE vehicles, just because I've got the biggest motor and I've got the most aggressive tires. But I'm very interested to see how Alistair is doing back there because <laughs> that was a really steep uphill. And we haven't gotten to the downhill part yet, so he might be sweating bullets. <laughs> so for us, we're doing 55 miles an hour. I don't think we're going to have to stop, so that's like, what, four hours and change? I think Alistair is going to be closer to six or six and a half. And really, it really depends on if the fast charger is A, unoccupied, and B, working at full capacity. So. Welcome to the future, the F-150 Lightning. This is actually a platinum edition which has all the bells and whistles but cost, wait for it, over $98,000. And I'm still getting used to the idea of spending a hundred grand on a truck. We keyed in all the, all the details of the trailer into the computer and that's helped spit out the, the estimated range. It started at 160 miles, but it did warn us that it would recalculate as you go, uh, go along and it gets used to the prevailing conditions. Already as we've gone up some inclines, it's dipped to 137 miles and it's coming down all the time. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that. So if you're not towing, this truck has a, what we call a one-pedal driving mode, which is similar to the, the Tesla that's on the trailer behind me, which means that really you just drive with, with the throttle, you lift off the throttle, the regenerative braking takes over and, and slows the vehicle. When you turn on tow mode in the Lightning, it switches off that function, so you drive it more like a conventional car, using the brakes to slow. For me, that's an important security measure when, you, when you're towing a sizable load like we are here, and you, you dial that up through the computer. But that doesn't mean that it switches off the regenerative braking. So when we're going downhill, I can take my feet off all the pedals and he's actually using the regenerative braking to control the speed of, of the truck and the trailer behind it. And that energy is then converted into electricity, which is used to recharge and give us a bit more range. And that's all taken care of by the computer. It feels a lot like engine braking in a traditional internal combustion car. It's, it's pretty neat. There's so much clever tech that you have really have to kind of think about in this truck. Before the tow test, we subjected the Lightning to the world's famous Edmunds EV range test. We managed 332 miles on a single charge, 32 miles more than the official EPA estimate. It won't get anywhere near that towing, but it shows it's in good shape. As the miles wore on, it was clear that the heat of competition was having an effect. So ambient temperature outside is about 95 degrees and this is set to 72 and like I'm hot. It feels way hotter than 72 in here. So I really wish I could turn it down, but I can't because we have everything the same. Meanwhile, in the Lightning, I was all talk. So first impressions of towing with a Lightning. Well, two things really stand out. Firstly, the sheer propensity of torque. This vehicle has 775 pounds feet and it's instantaneously available. The next biggest here is the hybrid with 570 assuming you've got charge in the battery, then the diesel 480 pounds feet 
and of course torque is everything when you're towing. Second thing is just how quiet it is. It is exceptionally peaceful in here, not just compared to a traditional truck, but even compared to a, to a luxury car. This is just a, a nice place to be. Before we even set off, we had to do more thinking about the route in a way that you simply don't have to do in a, in a gas or a diesel alternative. Where are we gonna stop? Where's the fast charger? Can we get there? How is it gonna impact the time of the journey? And it is a kind of mental pressure that we're just not used to. And although the computers help, you still gotta do a bit of the legwork yourself. 50 miles in, Emmy was having her own challenges. I am so bored. <laughs> 55 miles an hour is the worst, you guys. This Ram is the definition of cruising right now. Alistair, what's the verdict on the Lightning so far? Honestly, we're in good shape. We've still got 120 miles, 118 miles left on the range. Super quiet, super comfortable. We're currently tracking to get about a 180 miles out of this charge. It's good. We're cruising here in the hybrid. Uh, everything's going well so far. Now that the uh, terrain is leveled off, my uh, fuel economy's gone up. According to the computer, I'm averaging about 15 miles a gallon, which is what the Chevy is supposed to do without a trailer. So I'm pretty pleased with that. So we are 87 miles and one hour 43 into the route and actually doing far better than expected. When we looked at the route planner, we were expecting to stop in Bakersfield where there's a fast charger, 350 kilowatts. But having made it to Bakersfield, we've still got 100 miles of estimated range and only 54 miles to Mojave. So we're gonna push on. But the route to Mojave involves a pretty big hill. So there is an element of jeopardy. There is a sort of game to all of this that we're trying to manage our battery so we never have to fill to more than 80%, at which point the charge rate really, really kind of slows down. And we never want to let it fall below 20% because then you have all the ramp up and it will take forever. So we're trying to manage between 20 and 80%. So we're trying to gain that with the available infrastructure as we go along our journey, which is kind of fun, but also kind of stressful. Surprising, I can't believe that that Lightning is getting as good a range as it is. So yay, go electric. Just don't beat me. As we turned for Mojave, the need for fuel was more Matt than machine. Living the American dream. Everybody really wanted Frosties. I didn't even have to stop. If I didn't need to go to the bathroom and get a Diet Dr. Pepper, I would still be on the road. So we stopped for uh, just a handful of calories. Now we're using the truck's onboard computer to calculate our distance to the final destination down in Santa Clarita, but also where we need to recharge. So let's hit go. It's now adding the charges to the trip. So it's saying total trip time, two hours, 49 minutes, charge time, one hour, 25. So if I hit details for that, it's giving me a charge point at Mojave Denny's. Uh, the only thing with that is we don't think that's the fastest charging. So we did a little bit of pre-planning before we, we did the route. We think this is only a 50 kilowatt charger, not a 350. And we can't find a way of forcing the system to take us to the, the 350 as part of, its, part of its route planning. So the only way to start to do it is to go back into the nav, call up the charging system, Honestly, there's a reason why Google and Apple do CarPlay and Android Auto. This is a pretty frustrating system. So what we've done now is actually keyed up the chargers manually. We're asking it to find us super fast chargers, which is defined by Ford as anything over 100 kilowatts, which is absolutely what you need in a truck that has 130-ish kilowatt battery. We know that there's one in Mojave and that's where we're headed, but can we find it? Mojave, Electrify America, that one. So the charger that we think is there in Mojave, Mojave Airport, charge point EV Connect, it's not bringing up Electrify America. Check the filters. So basically the system's not bringing up the charger that we're pretty sure exists. This is really, really annoying. 
I know the technology has got to keep up with the mapping and over the air updates help and everything else, but this is so fundamental to getting it right. And this is where all the anxiety and the stress comes from. The, the truck's performing great. We've actually gone far further in terms of range than we anticipated. Now we need to find a charger and we're having to kind of second guess the onboard system with what we're finding on our phones and then kind of hope for the best when we get there. Let's go to Mojave. Well, we just had our one and probably only stop and it was not for fuel. We are probably not gonna need to stop for fuel at all. So we just got a little food break, a little rest break, and now we're heading through the desert on kind of the, the beginning of the home stretch. Uh, right now, we're near the back of the caravan. The F-150 hybrid is way out in front. We'll see whether they stop or not. And then it's the Silverado Zero Two, then us, and then Alistair pulling up the rear in the Lightning. Uh, they should be stopping any second now to get a charge. And it looks like the Lightning is going to be the only one that needs to fill up, which we weren't expecting. And even then, they're doing much better with efficiency and range than we thought that that truck was going to. So it's been pretty surprising results so far. But as for us, as for us in the Ram, we're just cooking right along. Uh, this diesel is not stressed at all. It still says we have about 330 miles of range left, which is pretty astonishing. Um, but yeah, very smooth. As we trundled across the desert, there was time to take in some of the not so wildlife. But oh, I've got some, what are they? Got some cows going past. I don't want to tell him I just went to Wendy's. We're about 10 miles out from the gas station where I'm going to fill up just before we cross the finish line. The other trucks are going to do the same. Uh, the idea is to see how much fuel each of us used over the trip. Because you know, fuel economy is different, but uh, I may get there first, but I, I might have been a little thirstier than the diesel, so uh, interested to see how this all plays out. So, the telltale sign of the Denny's, combined with the sat-nav, is telling us that we have reached the EV charger. And look, there's even a little tiny blue sign saying EV. So the good thing is nobody's here, so I can actually get in with the trailer, which is, which is positive. But before we do that, I'm going to pull up and jump out and just see exactly what we're dealing with in terms of charging speed. So charge point, 50 kilowatts, 50 kilowatts, 50 kilowatts, level two, so that's as good as useless, and 50 kilowatts. So we're going to be here like two or three hours. So what we're going to do now is have a look at our phone, see if there's a better option that the Ford system somehow isn't showing us. 50 kilowatts is about 130 kilowatt hour battery. When you think about the ramp up to start charging the ramp down, honestly, we would be here for minimum two hours to, to get the kind of charge that we need to get ourselves to the final destination. So let's have a hunt around, see if there's something a bit faster. This is the problem, folks. There's only so much Denny's you can eat. I don't want to be here two hours. The Lightning will charge at up to 150 kilowatts per hour, which was the minimum speed we were looking for. But it is now revealing Electrify America charge station, which is 1.3 miles away, which has got 350 kilowatts, and it's telling me that there's a four, but it's not telling me whether they're available or not. So I could go with the Electri Electrify America app and check that out, but we're a mile away, so let's just head on down there. Really weird that it's not in the Ford system, and that's the difference between charging in, I don't know, 30 minutes and a couple of hours. So what's really winding me up is right behind us over there is a Tesla supercharger. So we could in theory charge the car, but not the truck. So the good news is we found a 350 kilowatt Electrify America charger with a nice little overhead canopy nestling behind a Comfort Inn. That's the good news. The bad news is that we have a truck with a trailer and absolutely no way of connecting said truck and trailer to the power. So what we've got to do now is decouple the trailer and then pull the truck in. That's going to take a few minutes, but it's still faster going through all that hassle for the 350 kilowatts than it would be to go back up the road to the 50. Does that work? This is kind of the arsehole move, right? Hope he's not a big dude. Being a decent sort of chap, I decided to uncouple the trailer. And while I was doing that, others headed for the finish line. 
It's me. I am back first in the F-150 hybrid. Um, couldn't be happier with how it did. Didn't even use a half tank of fuel. So I'm uh, really curious about how long those other guys are gonna take, especially Alistair and that uh, Lightning. Free workout, people. Well, we made it in the Ram, and it was just as comfortable as I expected. We're not the first ones here, but you know what? This thing is first in my heart. And that's what's important. Here we go. Trusty charge port. Plug in first, wait for the click, then connecting to vehicle. We will hold our trusty phone somewhere near it. Swipe to charge. Processing payment, here we go. Initializing charging. Stay with me people, it's the exciting bit. So, we've plugged it in to DC fast charger. We know the system in theory is working, somebody else was charging Ionic 5 over there, but now we're getting charge error through the Electrify America app. It was saying initializing charging. Now it's not working, we've got another warning inside the cab here, charge station fault C manual. So we're gonna do control out delete and try again and um, see what happens. This is the problem, right? If this doesn't work and we can't charge the vehicle, what do we do next? Maybe try one of the charges up the road. I don't wanna go back to Dennis. Getting a red light flashing. I'm now trying to uncouple it. There we go. So let's try charger one. Right, it does fit. Swipe to charge. Blue lights on on the car. Initializing charging, electrify America, or don't electrify America, depending on how things are progressing. Fault. So what we're gonna do is reverse the truck out and try the one that we think was working for um, our Hyundai driving, driving friend, because this, this, ain't, this ain't working. Click. <sighs> Click. Click. So it worked! Hooray! So now we start playing the range calculation game. We started charging at 5.04. Theory hit 90% at 6.10. That's just over an hour's time. The reality though is that we've only got about another 70 miles to go to our destination. We've got 48 miles of range. But then we actually don't want to leave ourselves empty when we get there. So let's say we need about 120 miles to get there with 50 miles left in the tank. So we're going to charge up to the point where we hit about like 120, 130 miles and then we'll unplug in and get on the journey. So what we're not going to do is, is mess around trying to charge it to the max because frankly we don't need that. Yeah buddy! We made it! So we've been charging for 49 minutes, we spent 35 bucks and at 84 kilowatt hours of energy which has taken our range up to... 141 miles which is enough to get ourselves to a destination then hopefully on to the to a charger beyond because we've figured out we've got a bit of a grade in between now as you'll also see we're down to 56 kilowatts of, uh, of energy going in so as we're getting towards full the uh, charging rate started to drop off so we're going to unplug and get on the move i say get on the move but of course we've now got to reattach the trailer it's uh 6 p.m it's still a hundred and million degrees. Need the caffeine. Ryan Zumwalen. Hey Ryan. Alistair, my man. Where are you all? We're <laughs> in the trailer, the, the winner's trailer. With the air conditioning. Yeah, it's nice. I've got air conditioning. Miss you. <laughs> Do you know where? Do you want to know where I am? Why? Where are you? I'm in a beautiful seaside resort that reminds me a lot of the Mediterranean. It's called the Mojave. Sure, I know it well. A lot of sand. According to the car, it's 105 degrees. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. So, that sounds right. Uh, how long? How long do you think until you get back on the road? I know. Well, well, as fast as I can rehitch the trailer. Um, and then we'll be back on the road. Then we got about another like I don't know hour and a half to get to uh, to get to where you guys are. 
Yeah. yeah. Bloody well, don't wait for me, chaps. Uh, you know, go home. Oh no, oh no, we'll wait. Yeah, we'll wait. I really want to wait here for you, yeah, Alistair. We this we is a team effort. Bye. Peace Bye. So you guys aren't really going to wait though, right? No, Mikey's yeah. 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 Well, that was fun. While they kindly awaited my arrival, I went back to the gym. So it's about quarter to seven at night, sun is starting to set. We set off with about 85, 86% charge and it was suggesting 140 mile range. Then the system realized that we have a pretty big grade to go up, recalculated and suddenly suggests that we have only 110 miles of range. So it's a pretty sophisticated system that's taken into account all these different factors. So we now have 52 miles to go to our destination, 105 miles of range left as I speak. So we should arrive at about 52 miles left, which was our minimum requirement when we, when we drew up the rules. And so our journey finishes in a slightly less than triumphant fashion. Bonsoir to le monde. So everybody else made it back here by 5.30. It's now eight o'clock for me. And that whole time difference has got nothing to do with the truck itself and everything to do with the infrastructure and the difficulties we had getting it recharged. Now, I expected a bit of fanfare and maybe, you know, a, a cold beer, but no, everybody's gone home. So time to decouple the trailer, rescue the Tesla, and finally set off for bed. We've had a couple of nights sleep, we've had a shower, we've crunched the numbers. So, what did we learn? Well, we learned that diesel is as great for towing as you'd expect. Ryan's Ram 1500 barely noticed the Tesla on its back. The interior and ride quality continued to impress, and the truck averaged 17.6 miles per gallon, making it the most fuel efficient rig in our test. But diesel is more expensive than gas, so whether it's actually cheaper to fuel might depend on where you live. Emmy had a good run in the redesigned Silverado too. We were all impressed by how much more modern and premium the new cabin is. It's just so much better. As a tow truck though, the ZR2 trim wouldn't be our first choice. The tall stands and knobby tires take a toll on efficiency, and Chevy recommends pricier 91 octane gas. But despite this handicap, our resident off-road racer still managed a respectable 13.6 mpg. Our man Rees learned that Ford's hybrid system doesn't actually help with towing, but dragging around extra hardware didn't have too much of an impact on efficiency. Our F-150 Powerboost Hybrid netted 15.1 mpg on regular old 87 octane. But what about that much anticipated wildcard, the all-electric F-150? To be honest, we were surprised by how well the Lightning performed. We were towing almost 7,000 pounds, an average temperature of over 90 degrees across some pretty steep gradients. We'd expected a range of about 100 miles, but actually achieved closer to 170. There were three key factors at play. First, a transporter is a, a lot more aerodynamic than, say, a, a boxy toy hauler. We went down as well as up the hill, so benefited from regenerative braking. And thirdly, we were driving at the Californian trailering speed limit of 55 miles an hour, slower than you might have seen in other tests. We shared our data with the engineers responsible for the Lightning, who reckoned the speed was the biggest factor. The big lesson here, folks, if you want to go further, go slower. So where does this leave us? As a product to tow with, the Lightning is great, super quiet and super talky, but even with its battery fully charged, it still has less than half the effective range of the diesel Ram or the hybrid F-150. Then there's the infrastructure challenge. The charger we visited to fill up after the test didn't work either, which is just, well, rubbish. In total, we spent four hours and eight minutes trying to charge versus 10 minutes to fill up the Ram. Four hours more. Nor is it much cheaper. We spent 60 bucks on electricity versus 69 on diesel. Then there's the cost of the vehicle. The Lightning we'd recommend for towing the XLT costs almost 83 grand with the big battery. A traditional ICE truck with the equivalent towing capacity can be had for under 50K. That's a $35,000 difference. 
all of which means it's tough to recommend the EV. If you're going to tow your boat 50 miles the local lake and charge it at home, then at least take a look. But if you're going to tow a U-Haul across the country to pick up your kid from college, it's going to drive you nuts. So which should you choose? For the full analysis of all the facts and figures, check out our companion piece at edmunds.com slash towtest. But here's the executive summary. All three of the ICE trucks handle this test with ease, but they do differ in appeal. If you're buying an everyday truck and only tow occasionally, we'd go for the F-150 Hybrid, especially if you live in an urban area. But if you're buying a truck predominantly for towing, we still wouldn't look past the diesel. The Ram is a great truck, with a value price tag and the lowest fuel consumption on test. Sometimes the old ways are still the best. I'm Alistair Weaver for Edmunds. Thanks for watching.